Three pieces of furniture were seen in the holy place. We leave the bronze furniture behind in the court. Those in the holy place were made of gold, a table, an altar, and a lampstand. To our right is the table, made of acacia wood and covered in pure gold. It's three feet long, 18 inches wide, and 27 inches high. God explains, quote, you shall also make a table of acacia wood. Two cubits shall be its length, a cubit its width, and a cubit and a half its height. And you shall overlay it with pure gold and make a molding of gold all around. You shall make for it a frame of a hand breadth all around, and you shall make a gold molding for the frame all around. Exodus 25, verses 23 to 25. This is usually called the table of showbread. The table had an edging around it, probably to keep things from slipping off, and another piece called here a frame, perhaps a shelf, to hold the necessary dishes, spoons, bowls, and covers. It also had its own crown molding. What was the table for? Well, if this was God's home away from home, let it be known by all that he is hospitable. It was his plan from the beginning to design creatures like no other on earth, made in his image and therefore able to fellowship with him. The rebellion of his creatures severely delayed this, but standing in the holy place, we see evidence in the lampstand picturing the tree of life and the table pointing to renewed fellowship with God that the long exile of the human race would not last forever. Every week, the priests place 12 loaves on this exquisite table, arranged in two rows of six. On the top of each was a golden dish with frankincense, which was burned before the Lord at the end of the week, perhaps pointing to Christ's sole desire to please his Father. The loaves were called showbread, or more literally, the bread of the presence. Did they represent the 12 tribes of Israel? Let me suggest that they picture God's people in fellowship with the Father, enjoying his Son together. Note that the bread was, quote, before the Lord, Exodus 25, 30, for a whole week before the priests representing the people got to enjoy it. Does God need bread? This wasn't like pagan temples where people came to feed their idols. This bread spoke first of the Father's satisfaction in his Son. The Lord Jesus, the bread of God, John 6, came to invite us to dine. Quote, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Revelation 3, 20. He wants real face time now. But more, the bread also anticipates his satisfaction with the family that the Son will soon be presenting to the Father. Quote, he shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Isaiah 53, 11. When we ask whether the loaves represent God's people or the Lord Jesus, Surely we think of the words, quote, the bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, though many, are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. 1 Corinthians 10, 16 and 17. We are now indivisibly bound together with him. Oh, the wonder of it, quote, for both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, 
I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Hebrews 2, 11 to 13. As Carrie Breck wrote, face to face, O oh blissful moment, face to face to see and know, face to face with my Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who loves me so.